and it is you know five o'clock here so that totally makes sense yeah but uh thanks for <laughs> thanks for uh <laughs> being patient with me and uh uh, you're welcome catch my breath and i'm ready i'm ready to roll awesome yeah, all right problem. everything's looking good on twitch all right i'm jacob by the way nice hi to jacob meet you. nice to meet you man <laughs> <laughs> yeah brian no you know who i am <laughs> i know who you are man we've we had uh i guess we didn't have beignets together we no. had uh, sandwiches like uh muff, not muffaladas there was sandwiches right next door to to well, uh, um, just down the way from what was the name of that place the the gazebo that's where we the gazebo ate. gazebo yeah. cafe yeah place was great yeah we nice, talk about nice that and too. chilly in you know the, know. the <laughs> french quarter uh but uh we're pretty much ready to go you ready to throw that little ad yeah. read there jacob i think so yes i'm ready okay. yeah here we I go i got it three two one this episode of the Open Micros Podcast is brought to you by Mr. Daniel Salmon, who wanted me to tell you all that he just wanted to see Jacob get tased. That's right. That's something that he paid for. Jason's going to tase me soon. It's supposed to happen last weekend. <laughs> We're doing it this weekend. And if you're a patron, you get to see that. So we want to give a shout out to our lovely patrons, Mr. Derek Diamond, Miss Kathy Gutierrez Figueroa, and our newest patron, Mr. Old Rob himself, Robbie Hinnig. Woo! Thank you so much for supporting the show. Go to www.openmarkerspodcast.com to get that taser video, and let's start the episode. It can only mean one thing. It is time for the Open Micers Podcast. My name is Jason Robbins. I'm Jacob Craig. And would you like to do the honors of introducing our guest tonight? Because I always do it. So you, you, you can you can take this one. Yes, I would. This is a man who I have been listening to him podcast and who has introduced me to the most new music I have been introduced to over the last 15 years or so. Uh, he is the host of a show called Coverville, and if you've never listened to it, I highly recommend that you go download it right now because you have, what, about 3,000 episodes to go back and <laughs> listen like to, yeah. and it is Mr. Brian Ibbett joining us this evening. Hey guys, thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, just uh, coming off a, a, a training ride, bike ride up in Boulder, and um, ready to kind of sit down and relax and, and <laughs> chat with some friends here. So yeah, you're be doing good. Uh, you're doing a bike ride for charity. You want to tell everybody about that big, before we go? Yeah, big bike ride for charity uh, for MS. Uh, it's called the MS 150. It's a 150 mile bike ride from Denver up to Fort Collins, 75 miles up, we spend the night and then 75 miles back down to Denver and uh, all to all to raise money for uh, MS, fighting MS, you know, which I feel like we could do if I didn't ride a bike for <laughs> five and a half you know, hours a day. For I don't even want to drive straight. 75 miles, much less <laughs> I <know>. bike. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, there are a couple hills, but for the most part, it's just, you know, beautiful flat mountains on either side or, or to your left one way and to your right the other way. Um, just a really beautiful ride. And there's, it's not a race. I don't have to beat anybody yeah. and I never will. I never do. So, <laughs> oh, there's the kitty in the corner. <laughs> oh, look at that. You can see Anara. Hey, cat. Yeah. Named yeah, after gonna... Inara from uh, Serenity. From correct? Firefly. Yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But, Except uh, she's not a space hooker. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that that MS-150. Because uh, didn't last year, didn't you do uh, a Twitch feed from your bike I tried, race? I did for a while, yeah. it. Um, I did it for as long as things held out. I had a GoPro set up with the camera and or with the, um, the phone. And obviously that uses up tons of battery oh, power. Yeah. So I had a couple battery packs that were plugged in constantly, but uh, at the um, kind of at the mid stop lunch stop on that first day, um, rain just started pouring down. Now it didn't stop us from doing the ride, but it did make me decide, yeah, I'm going to put a few of these electronics away just uh, <laughs> to be safe. <laughs> yeah. That's probably so, the safest thing to do. Yeah, exactly. So I might, uh, you know, I might have Scott ready to do some call-ins. We'll do like a, a mock TMS, or not a mock, but like a uh, an impromptu TMS kind of thing. And I'll just call from each stop as I go just That's to kind of cool. break up the 
monotony. Yeah. yeah. Should be fun. But uh, like I said, you are the host uh, of uh, Coverville, and how long has that show been going now? You started that in what, like 2005? Uh, 2004, actually, wow. September 2004. Almost and, 20 um, years. I know, isn't that crazy? Yeah, <laughs> you're so, retro, that, sir. Uh, 18, <laughs> so it's 18 years now. They're getting yeah. close to. Uh, yeah, it, it feels uh, crazy. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> just sure. to have done it for so long, and really, I just don't have an exit strategy. I don't. I haven't figured out a way to end the show. Is the problem? Well, they keep putting um, out new music, so there. Yeah, there's no shortage of covers. Great, you know, artists. A Wall Nation just put out a great cover album. Um, who? There was somebody that. Um, Oh, geez, the barely reckless or something like that that just is coming uh, out. The with pretty reckless. The pretty reckless. Thank you. Yes. Barely pretty, you know. <laughs> the <Yeah>. barely pretty <laughs> reckless. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's so. Cindy Lou Who's band. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Huh. Yeah. Lead singer I think I follow Lou her on Twitter. Cindy Lou Who? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but she doesn't follow you on Twitter. Why uh, would you bring it up, Jason? <laughs> Anyone can go follow her. Shut up. <laughs> uh, but, but what uh, do you what do you think about Weezer's cover album that they put out? Do you oh, do you dig I'm, that? I love Weezer. I'm such a big fan, right? Like, you know, all the way from the the sweater song and Buddy Holly and all that. And I've stuck with them through everything. And then I hear this news. Oh, they're putting out a cover album. And they first I think they released Africa as the lead yeah. single. I'm getting ready to play it. I'm thinking this is gonna be so great because Weezer's got such a unique sound and uh, oh, this sounds just like toto why is this sound just like toto yeah and then the rest of the album sounded just like all the other bands that they were that they were covering it's like if you're gonna do covers and a band like weezer has a unique sound it's not just river's voice it's like the whole the whole sound of it and um they just they 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 squandered the opportunity but i still i still love weezer i just (laughs) not a fan of that album yeah i i gave it a listen like one time and i was like yeah this isn't really what mm-hmm. I was expecting or, you know, just yeah, couldn't I get don't into know. it. I, I feel like I might play the devil's advocate. I actually sure, really do. enjoyed the whole album. Um, I thought that their version of No Scrubs by TLC, mm-hmm. like it appealed to me more because I could actually sing along to it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that makes sense. Yeah, right. right. There, that's, you know, there's that, that's kind of like a, a great side effect of covers that I've noticed is that you get songs that you never completely understood the lyrics to like there were songs i was singing completely wrong lyrics all my life and then i hear this cover by an artist that enunciates better than joe cocker or prince or whoever it's like oh that's what they're singing all right cool yeah (laughs) right like when uh guns and roses covered rolling stones um what the oh what's the name of that song um Uh, the not sympathy for the devil uh um what it is sympathy for the is devil. Sympathy for the devil. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah that that's uh, the first time when I heard the Guns N' Roses cover. That was the first time I ever like actually understood what the <laughs> words were about. Which which you think would be funny because Axl Rose isn't known for great enunciation. So the fact right. that he's helping you understand the lyrics to a Stone song says more about the Stones than it does about Axl. I think. <laughs> right. Yeah. So for a show like Coverville, how exactly yeah. do you go about? How, how do I want to word that? Like, because there's licensing, so, yeah, licensing and royalties. How do, how does oh, that yeah. work? Yeah, it is. Um, this is one of those things that when I first started podcasting, there was no there was no roadmap for it, right? So I kind of had to uh, to learn as much as I could about it. And of course, things change over the years. It's 18 years, right? So who knows uh, uh, all the things that have changed that I haven't realized yet, but. Um, there are two sides to a cover song, obviously. There's the mechanical rights, which is um, uh, Weezer covers TLC, and you've got to, you know, you've got to uh, get the rights from Weezer to be able to play that cover. But then there's also the songwriting side. So there are three licensing agencies that deal with songwriting in the U.S., ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC. And everybody's songs are scattered all over the place these guys might be on ASCAP, the Beatles over there on BMI, Prince over on ASCAP or whatever. And um, so I basically have to pay a blanket license to each of those agencies. And there's two different kinds of licenses. There's the interactive license and the non-interactive license. Interactive is going to be your things like 
Pandora, Spotify, where you can kind of choose the songs that you want to hear. Mm. And so when I go to Pandora or where I go, it's maybe a more modern reference. When I go to Spotify and I say, <laughs> hey, I want to hear that song, that cover, um, they have to pay an interactive license. Fortunately, podcasts, people aren't choosing the songs that I play. So I get to go the cheaper route with a non-interactive license. It still comes out to about $1,500 per year. So that's why you got to make up for it with, yeah. with advertising, Patreon, uh, you know, open guitar case in the front. <laughs> so yeah we're barely making 20 bucks we can't spend 1500 right right so do you and have so, to keep like a log of everything that you've played and then submit i do it? yeah at every quarter i have to submit it to all three agencies and the good thing wow. is that they their computer systems are smart enough to say all right i submit because they've been doing this with radio stations for years radio stations have exactly the same kind of license that we have to play but they have a much bigger audience um I just have to, you know, log the songs that I play in total, send each of them the same spreadsheet, and they each parse it out and divvy up my, you know, 600 bucks amongst <laughs> the 600 artists that I play. Here's yeah. here's a dollar from Coverville or whatever. But, um, right. that but yeah, that's like how you a, keep legal. Then like the, the mechanical rights, <laughs> it is a lot of work. And that's why you do as much as you can to kind of get permission from independent artists i stick to mostly independent artists on the show um two reasons number one it's it's easier on the licensing they have to just give me permission i get permission i don't need anything else um i don't need to pay any anything to that side of things but also um it's kind of great to give a boost to the little guys you know the the indie musicians that are just starting out or the indie musicians who've been doing it for a long time like Pomplamoose and um, Scott Bradley's Postmodern Jukebox and Rock Sugar and groups like that. Um, hopefully I've named one that I've turned you on to in the last oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 15 years, 18 years. But um, yeah, it, much easier to work with those guys because you just work directly with them or with their their small label. Then you've got the bigger ones like Warner Brothers and EMI and I guess EMI is not around, but Sony BMG and all those. And you know, I started out by writing emails to them saying, here's what I'm doing. Here's a list of songs I'd love to play. Can I get the mechanical rights from you guys? And if I heard back from them, it was a form letter pointing me to Sound Exchange or Harry Fox, which are thousands of dollars to to license the song the way I'd want to use it. So, yeah, yeah. let's stick with the little guys. Let's stick with the indie artists. I shouldn't keep calling them little guys because they probably don't, independent artists probably don't like being called little. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them are probably making more money than people who have to deal with the major labels. They are. They're certainly making more money than I am. And I'm fine, <laughs> fine with that. But yeah, yeah. you know, um, for a while, Weezer was doing their own, speaking of Weezer, was doing their own thing where, and I thought it was a great deal, where they had their own label and they were, um, they were doing a Patreon model before Patreon even existed. You would basically make a monthly payment to Weezer and they would release all of this new music to you demos and you get to hear their singles immediately and get copies of them and and things like that and um this sounds familiar uh, like somebody who is a drummer wanted to do this about two, <laughs> 2008 and nobody listened to me oh no <laughs> this again <laughs> this again because I this actually is a, this is something it. he's brought up before. He claims oh. that he invented Patreon, and yeah. he did it. Look, you didn't. Here's the thing: in Falls from Grace, which is the band I'm still in, in 2008, sure. I came up with this whole plan about, hey, we should make a website where we get PayPal, and people can pay us like a dollar a month, and we just give them like, like videos and like do a song a month, blah blah blah. And they're like, no, that's stupid. And here we are in 2022. I'm like, huh? See? See how much money we could have right. been making. Yep. Okay, yep. Grandpa. Shut up. <laughs> I'm going to turn off. I'm going to boot you from the Zoom call. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's so easy for you to replace me. You just, it's now open micros with Jason and Brian. And now it's going to be a whole <laughs> better show, actually. Right. Um, that, so I, I don't know how much you know about uh, licensing rights with YouTube and everything, mm. but... This is this is very interesting to me because something that I know about YouTube is that if somebody plays someone else's music, 
you can play an entire album of music in a video. Mm-hmm. And as long as it's labeled as a review yeah. or uh, as some kind critique, of like review or education. Or like that. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's uh, three, three factors. And I don't know if YouTube adheres to all three of them, but it's, it's reviewer critique, um, education or uh, promotion. Like if you work directly yeah. for the, the, the band you of course have the rights to do that so as long as you call it i'm educating you on what this entire album sounds like or i'm going to review this album then you've right. kind of got a little bit more uh leeway on that sort of thing you know um, that's that's so strange to me though that you can get away with playing an entire album of music yeah. for a video and at the end of it just say that was really good <laughs> that's all you have to say <laughs> here's my review <laughs> right I, I actually got a dmca takedown from myself Oh, Did wow, you back. from yeah, one of your own, from your own band? Yeah, because yeah. before I released all the old Fall as Well stuff, like re reissued it, I I just put up the songs and the videos on my own YouTube page, mm. and then when I finally got everything done and put through CD Baby, and then I got all the the licensing rights and everything, immediately like a couple days later, I get an email <laughs> from uh, pretty much myself saying that I'm going to uh, take all the money I make from those videos. I'm like. Eh, I'm all right with it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Oh, just rip it right out of my pockets, yeah. why don't you? Yeah. yeah. How would that even work? Would it just it would just come out come out and just go back in? I, I don't know. I don't know how any of it works. It's all bots. It's all AI bots. Right. And it's it's so weird because with the because sometimes like. You can get a takedown on YouTube because those algorithms, that AI is so freaking sensitive that even when I first uploaded Monsters Anonymous, the movie, to um, to YouTube, it got taken down because of the licensing right with the song that we used at the end of the movie with from Zombie Ghost Train. So I actually had to contact... It took me like two weeks to finally get a human being with YouTube and, say, and, and I had to... Uh, photocopy of uh, the um, contract I had with Mm. Zombie Ghost Train to be able to use that song in the movie to finally get the movie to be able to be on YouTube. It was so many hoops to jump through. Like, if I'd have just had a human being from the start, you know, it would have been so much easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, the, so much of that stuff is automated, right? With the, I mean, just the algorithms that they use to like listen through every single second of video to see what they can make money from or, or <laughs> take down or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's so weird. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, one of the things I want to talk to you about is uh, yeah. you. we actually met for the first time in New mm-hmm. Orleans uh, a while mm-hmm. back. What was that, like February, March? I think that's right. Yeah, early March, late February, yeah. And uh, like that. Jacob, I talked him into going to Dat Dog. Yes. Oh, I love Dat Dog. Oh, dude. that place is so good. Yeah, I had the you can uh, easily fuck up like thirty dollars there. <laughs> <laughs> totally yes. And you know, you think, oh, well, I want some fries, and oh, I'm gonna order some fries too, and then you get this massive thing of. <laughs> yeah. When I first tell you, it's a, a when I first suggested fries. it to him, he was like hot dogs who goes to new orleans to get hot dogs i'm like no you don't understand you have to go it's it's completely a new orleans hot dog best hot dog you'll ever have dude it would easily easily and i had gator and you know i've had i've had gator before but uh never as a hot dog and that was fantastic wow was it was it spicy i think it was yeah it was uh i can't remember the name like there was a obviously some sort of punny name to it and um the gator skin or gator yeah. well they have something the, like that and i'm gonna look up the names of these hot yeah. dogs because they got like yeah, the yeah, rougarou yeah. Right. Is... <laughs> yeah see i take that for granted because i can literally just drive to the gas station by my house and just go mm. eat some gator oh like, really? yeah sure because <laughs> you live out in the middle of nowhere that's why that's true but the local gas station has gator balls it's just a ball of fried alligator really like deep fried with a breading kind of thing yeah with yeah. breading and it's like really spicy and gator cool. is such an interesting taste if you've never it had it before it yeah. doesn't taste like anything else no you can't say it tastes like chicken because it's like a it's like a moist yeah like it's it's a it's a um 
I hate using that word, but I mean, it's like a, it's not as dry as like a chicken or yeah. uh, pork or something like that. It's, it's very beefy almost too. It is. Yeah. It's, kind it's of, a little bit gamey for me. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. It's kind of like a chicken gizzard. That's the way yeah. that I yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Except not as me and not as chewy or not as. Yeah. Uh, uh, they changed up the menu here to where I'm looking at it. It just has the names and it doesn't have oh, really? what's in the hot dog. God, oh. why did I? I should have been Googling it this whole time. Why did I I'm let you on do the it? website. <laughs> it just says. Feels like uh, that should be a reputable source, is their own, the dat yeah, dog dat dog dot com. com. It and it's the bacon. Yeah. They have the bacon werewolf. They have the Rougarou. They have the sea dog special, the Guinness special, uh, okay. the craw- crawfish etouffee dog. Which uh, which one of those was uh, is is Gator? Because it's well, see, it doesn't it say it. It literally oh, really? just has. Oh, the names, I see what you're saying. It doesn't say the kind of. Not like you, they saying. changed up their website, and I don't like it. I'm gonna go complain uh, at that dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's literally just called the alligator sausage from the bayou. That's it. Yep. Oh and no, I, I found thought... that in two minutes, Jason. <laughs> Was um, I might have been the Rougarou because that one is also gator smothered in bacon, barbecue sauce, and jalapenos. That sounds so good right now. It does. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I it would does. eat the hell out of that. I would eat that on the yeah. air right now and just that. And that's a you know, New Orleans is such a great eating town. I you know, there's yeah. towns where you say, oh well, this is a place where you have Cajun food and seafood, amazing seafood and and beignets and 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 then uh, hot dogs and things like that. I love going to cities where um, where you're not saying all right, well, you know, let's go sightseeing and then we'll just find something right around there to eat. It's like, no, we're planning this and then we'll do sightseeing wow. around that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why I can't do comedy in New Orleans anymore because like the most I've ever made there is like $50 and I'll just spend it right back in the same spot on some food. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Easy to do there too. See, right, I like yeah. to go to the, the, I'm not big on eating in places in the quarter even though we did eat at a place in the quarter when sure, we met right. there. Cause, well, because you knew that, you know, we'd be we'd be sightseeing around there. So I gotta we were say, very that was gracious a, to... That was a damn good roast beef po' boy they had. It was. That's what they were, po' boys. Yeah, I had the oyster and uh, oyster and shrimp uh, po' boy. And, um, man, those are great. Could have yeah. used a lot more. I like a little more sauce, but, you know, whatever. That's just yeah. me. But it, it wasn't cool. the best place to, like, actually meet somebody for the well, first time <laughs> so right. it was so cold and so was so loud. Loud. it was so cold right and uh <laughs> it was so hard to get tables inside anywhere because this was further into the pandemic where you had to be you know if you wanted to be inside you did the mask thing and, and all that and and plus it was an unusually cold week for you guys in yep. uh new orleans so getting a table inside anywhere was was gonna be difficult but uh and it was so loud because of the they had a band out there and we're like trying to <laughs> talk to right. one another and we're like oh. screaming i forgot that yeah, <laughs> 10 feet away from us is a is a uh, jazz band that is uh <laughs> ripping through when the saints go marching in for the fourth time i'm a time horrible and... host I, I i'm so sorry <laughs> you were you were absolutely not you were fantastic well, and i still there's... love the uh the t-shirts you oh have, yeah so. yeah yeah there's there's not a quiet corner in New Orleans to go meet somebody. No, there really isn't. I mean, if there's if there is a quiet corner, bands are about to find it and set up right. shop there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as an open space on the sidewalk. Somebody's no. doing something, whether it's somebody right. beating on uh, you know five gallon buckets or yep. somebody break dancing or you know little right. kids tap dancing yeah. like there's Doing something the, the, everywhere the bottle caps yeah exactly Dude, yeah. Th- this might be kind of a gross story but the one time i did find <laughs> some a quiet place in new orleans i had left the bar that i was i had I, I was headlining a comedy show there i had left the bar and i went to the the like right beside it is just completely dark and there's just that's the only place i could find to like be quiet enough to talk on the phone and i looked down and with my phone light, I see just like something moving and I turn on my flashlight and it's these like at least a hundred fucking antennas coming out of the sidewalk. Oh my God. Oh where God. there's just okay. a line of roaches. <laughs> oh, 
Jeez. Hanging out in the dark. Ew. That's the only quiet spot there is in New Orleans, and it's occupied by roaches. There you go. Yeah. Oh, and during Oof. the pandemic, too, there were videos of uh, there's this pizza place, the place I used to stop and get slices of pizza all the time, mm -hmm. uh, close to uh, Bourbon Street, um, somewhere down there. But they had a video somebody took one night after they closed, and it was, you know, during the pandemic, and they, they look inside, and there's just rats climbing over oh, everything every every <laughs> surface that's used to prepare your pizza yeah <laughs> like, i'd still eat it yeah oh i'm sure you would <laughs> i have no morals and you thought new york only had pizza rats no they're they're in new orleans no, they're, too. i think 90 percent of new orleans is rats within the walls yeah. and under the streets they're everywhere we had a uh, a guide tour guide so we did the haunted uh haunted new orleans tour i think there's oh, probably those, about a thousand of those those are so cool they are yeah and, and tina's really into that kind of stuff right she loves haunted tours and in any town we go to or if there's a a ghost house or something like that she's she's all in um our tour guide i don't know if he just kind of fallen into the habits but the three phrases his three go-to phrases would be of course uh, as you'll see, or as we'll see, and ladies and gentlemen, and he used those to begin <laughs> everything. So it's like we come up to, to um, Anne Rice's house or something. And, oh, well, of course, ladies and gentlemen, as we'll see, uh, uh, Anne Rice lived here and uh, was purported to have thirteen ghosts that lived in her house. And then we go to a restaurant, ladies and gentlemen, and as we'll see, of course, the uh, the patrons always leave a table for the ghost oh, who yeah. lives in this restaurant who hung himself in the rafters. Uh, blah 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 so he <laughs> we had a kind of a uh, tina and i listening kind of like a little side bet all right i think at this time it's going to be as we'll see of course <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> which order is he going to say them in but he yeah, was he was still great yeah i did a vampire, yeah, that's a great drinking game i did a vampire <laughs> tour once uh and the guy that did the tour was a professor at tulane and he oh. actually had vampire fangs like implanted, like chiseled. Okay, I was wondering if those uh, where they sand down the teeth to make the fangs. Oh yeah, no, these were like in. full on. In, uh, wow. like, like he had them like screwed into his jaw. Wow. Like they were long. Okay. I'm like you teach history like that at a university, and they <laughs> they're cool with that. And your your students take you seriously. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But we sat. And I talked to him for like an hour at the bar after the the tour was done. He was yeah. a cool dude. I was like, yeah, oh, I, sure. I would have loved to take a history class from that guy. No kidding. That's really cool, huh? But why though? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I'm sure he gets better tips on the vampire tour. Having, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I guess so. <laughs> Maybe he is the vampire. Maybe he is exactly. Why do you think and, he knows these so well? Yeah. Right. Why do you think he's a history teacher? Do, does he only have classes at night or Ooh. does he have them during the day? <laughs> That's the question. Can you, <laughs> can you imagine reading the syllabus for that? It's like, you may not under any circumstances bring garlicky, garlicky food into my classroom. No right. lasagna. No garlic. No pizza. No holy no, water. <laughs> no drinking any kind of water. I don't care. <laughs> we have a very strict policy on religion. No crosses at all. Get the crosses out of my classroom. Uh, keep your mirrors at home. <laughs> <laughs> and that day that, uh, you know, after we, we, we split up, uh, we went to the murder museum, which I didn't even know oh. existed until wow. recently. And uh, that was that was something else. Let me tell yeah. you. Wow, that sounds cool. It was uh, I, I I recommend it if you're if you're into that sort of stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was Is it uh, like all sorts of memorabilia from serial killers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah they got a lot of stuff in there. Like um, like they have whole the whole setup that Jack Kevorkian had. Like they okay. took around. In all there. right, interesting. So uh, just last month, I was in Vegas for uh, Viva TMS Vegas, and on the last day before we flew out, we did the Zach Bagans. Um, uh, haunted museum and oh, one yeah. of the things that you see in there is jack kevorkian's van so so if you tell me that they had jack kevorkian's van at the murder <laughs> museum as well, well it wasn't the I'm van gonna... it was just it was the suitcase that he would have that gotcha. he would hook up all okay. the like the the you know the fluids and yep the stuff yep. that would kill you i'm but... sure that suitcase <laughs> nice. spent a lot of time in the van i saw yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> they had death masks in there um, oh, cool. from pe- from different people. Like they had Michael Jackson's death mask in there. Oh wow! Uh, they crazy. had Napoleon Bonaparte's death mask. Wow! Like you can actually see what Napoleon Bonaparte looked like as a human being. Yeah, because it's like a um, like life cast basically. Yeah, it, but yeah it's basically death cast. Life they do cast. it after you die. So, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was pretty trippy. I mean it. A little expensive, but I, I do yeah. recommend it if if it's something that you know if you're into like true crime and all that kind of stuff, it's it's a cool place to yeah. go. This sounds yeah. kind of like the place in Hostel, and I don't <laughs> like the movie it. Hostel. <laughs> yeah, like we're gonna go there to like, can we see the murder stuff, and then we we get murdered when we go right. Home. You become <laughs> yeah part of the exhibit. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad you asked. Right this way, that death mask looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that no name podcaster Jason Robbins? <laughs> I thought I knew that. Is Nerd Cave Retro finally over? Maybe. Is that what this means? Uh, but yeah, New Orleans is a cool place. I'm glad we got to meet up really over is. there. And Me too. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, um, next year I hope I get to go to TMS Vegas, or if there's a, a Nerd Tacular next year. You know, we're always pushing Scott to do another Nerdtacular, and I think he he sees the level of work that it takes to just do TMS Vegas, and he probably thinks, yeah, I don't want to do that just yet. I'm not ready to, <laughs> to get back into that thing just yet. But we're, we're trying to add more stuff. We're thinking we're going to add more stuff to TMS Vegas, not to turn it into Nerdtacular 2.0, but just to make it less about all right, we're going to go and do something at this bar. And then we're going to go do something over at this bar. But you know, we're talking about doing a live film sack, getting Brian Dunaway and Randy out there and doing a live film sack there and stuff. So we'll see. See, I've never Hopefully. been to Vegas. So I really, oh. I really wanted to go this year, but just the, the funds and plus with yeah. Derek's wedding happened like the weekend before. And it was just like, ah, I'm just, I'm not going to be able to go. Listen, man, I would be happy to be your Sherpa and take you around to all the cool things. You can you can spend an entire week in Vegas seeing some amazingly cool things and never put a single penny in a slot. Like the, you know, it's it's there's you know, and it's another eating destination, right? There's incredible restaurants. Every every major chef has a, a couple places out there. Even some great minor unknown chefs have a lot of great places out there. Um Lots of cool things off the strip to check out. A couple amazing tiki bars. Um, yeah, because gambling yeah. isn't really my thing. I mean, hell, yeah. I live in a gambling town, and I, I right. haven't stepped right. foot in a casino in like five years. Yeah. yeah, same here. Colorado has gambling. I haven't been up there, and and so for for me going to Vegas, I think I maybe spent twenty dollars gambling. Played some craps for a night. I played about a hundred bucks there, but um, but I easily could have gone the entire time we were there without without gambling it was more of like a social thing than a all right i'm jonesing for some chips uh let's you know yeah. let's roll the bones well, last time i actually did some uh gambling i won so much money that i'm so far in the black i i do never i don't want to go back to the wow. casino and ruin yeah. that streak because I, I know exactly what that's like yeah it's I, like <laughs> I, I don't want to yeah i don't want to blow it because i had a yeah. friend of mine that woke me up at about two o'clock in the morning a few years ago this was probably no. This was probably about 2007, 2008, and he wakes me up at like two or three in the morning. And says, "Hey, go to the casino with me." I'm like, all right, I ain't got nothing to do. So I wake up. We go to the casino, and he wants to go play poker. Sure. And I like playing poker, but I like playing with friends. I don't like playing, yes. you know, in with the a casino bunch of with, yeah. with yeah, with the yeah. like those guys that look like they're going to take me in the back and like smash my hand with a hammer. Like I'm not into it. <laughs> right. Yes. So he wants to go play and I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to go downstairs and just play slots or whatever. And so I walk downstairs and I see the roulette table hmm. and just, just, I pulled a $20 bill out of my pocket and I walked up to the table and I said, put it on 16. Oh, wow. And it hit. <laughs> Holy cow. And that's she, amazing. That's a... she literally just put a mountain of chips in front of me. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there playing a little bit here and there. And sure. my buddy comes down like 30 minutes later. He's completely tapped out. He walks past the table. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck happened? <laughs> I'm like, got this mountain of chips. I ended up walking out of there with like, after, you know, playing for like another 30 minutes. Plus I tipped her like $200. 
And I I ended up walking out with like $1,400 or something like that. I ended up paying my rent that month. I paid off my (laughs) Xbox 360 that I had just bought. It was awesome. Yeah. And you did the right thing and not and not think to yourself, oh, I've got the touch. Okay, well, well let's let it ride. Let me tell 16. you what I did though. I took she put these mountains of chips on the 16. I yeah. put I pulled like three there was like four stacks of, of like hundred chips up there. Yeah. I pulled most yeah. of them off and I left about five like I don't remember what I left up there, but I said yeah. it's gonna hit again and it literally hit again. But Seriously. I didn't do the full 16. I did it on the, the fours <laughs> where you split it okay. four way. Right, on the corner. Yeah, yeah. on the corner. Yeah. And she was like, how did you do that? I'm like, I, I'm I'm psychic, baby. I'm psychic. <laughs> but if I'd have kept That's it awesome. on the 16, I would have won like thousands of dollars oh, yeah, at that, that point. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Dollar wow. Store Professor X, everybody. Yes. Right. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and, and I haven't gambled since. Since that day, I have not gambled since. Smart man. Yeah, why would you? Yep. I'm in the black. Yeah. I'm staying that way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what about you, Jacob? You just turned 21. Have you have you gambled yet? Yeah. So um, the week after I turned, <laughs> he eats gator balls. Of course, he's gambling. Yeah, <laughs> he gambles <laughs> yeah, every yeah. day when he eats at the gas station. <laughs> Convenience store gator balls. <laughs> oh, dude. Sorry. Sorry. If go ahead. <laughs> no, if we're talking about just regular life things, I gamble every day, dude. <laughs> I am talking like hot dog rollers at the circle K. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's my life. That's a But at an actual casino, like the week after I turned 21, my mom took me and we went to the hard rock as I wanted to see all the memorabilia and stuff. And I I wasn't old enough to go to the part where there's a lot of cool stuff. So I looked there and, um, you know, I saw all the cool memorabilia and, uh, we paid, we played penny slots for about an hour. And I was, up about i was up like 24 dollars and then lost it all like that's oh, it's, that's just like the kind of fun that you have you know it's like yeah. you get five bucks on the penny slot you get up you get down i lost five bucks see and that's nothing and and what you're doing there is you're basically paying for the experience the money's gone right. as soon as you put it on the table or in the slot machine or give it to the dealer or whatever what you get back is is gravy but really you're just paying for the experience which which if you think about it that way, it's, it doesn't feel so bad when you lose. But see, that's the thing right. with the penny slots. You, you have to play at least like $5 to get any <laughs> yeah, money out of it. It's such a misleading, <laughs> right, calling them penny slots. It's like, okay, but I'm yeah. playing 500 lines at a penny yeah. each, so it's a $5 <laughs> bet. Yeah, yeah I, I don't like those machines. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not really a slot person. I, I've tried to play slots a few times. Just not my thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I actually, do. I've never gambled at a table. I've been like too afraid. It's intimidating the first time you do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but they There's have a, the blackjack tables that you can go. It's like you know a dollar minimum a, bet or whatever, and and basically like a learning table. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the video ones, right? Like the it's like the training yeah, wheels of actual tables. They've got like it's you're still sitting at a table with other people, but the dealer is a video, and she's like, okay, place your bets and. And then you know you're like, okay, well I can't piss her off, uh, yeah. or so you think. <laughs> I don't, I don't trust anything electronic though. <laughs> yeah, right, sure. Well, no, they here's the secret. That. And me and my buddy Matt used to do this all the time. We would go when the Treasure Bay, the big boat was out there. You remember the mm. old Treasure Bay casino? Yeah, rest, I don't know. If rest you, in peace. Yeah, um, we used to go to that one, and we would go to the the bar Scalawags in the middle of the casino, and we would sit there at the uh, the bar. Where they had the, the 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 machines, the poker machines, right there in the bar, and we would put in a dollar and just hit buttons for like an hour and get free mm-hmm. drinks. That's all you have to do, and you just do it when the bartender's looking. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm playing. <laughs> oh, yep, yep, I'm playing. And then as soon as they look away, it's a good way to get free drinks. <laughs> it totally yeah. is. Yeah, that doesn't work at a lot of bars because they they only have like one cocktail waitress that's serving the person who's you know up a hundred dollars yeah not to mention so there are a lot of places in vegas that actually have a little counter that you can't see that's facing the bartender that turns uh or green as soon as they're able to give you another drink as soon as they're allowed to give you another drink huh i did not know that yeah you, you know the the higher end places have that so it gets trickier to like play the bartenders like you're playing the machines yeah I actually went to one of the buffets not too long ago. I think it was Harrah's 
casino, went to the buffet, and right outside the entrance to the buffet was a Mad Max Fury Road mm -hmm. machine. Yeah. And I took a picture of it, and I tweeted it at Scott Johnson. I was like, if there's anything that can get that man to gamble yes. is this machine right here. And I never did ask him because there was one in our hotel, the, the hotel that we uh, held the event at, and I even played it. And that that's probably the thing that will draw me to a slot is if it's for a uh, a property or franchise that I like. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, look, I'm looking at, you know, Tom Hardy's and <laughs> Charlie's Theron's and that sort of thing. Uh, and then I get bored with that and I leave and I'm, I'm done. But uh, I don't know if he actually ever did go and play the, the Mad Max machine. See, I don't like those machines because I don't even know what's going on on the oh, screen. Yeah. No, it's such a, it's such a, they could tell you anything. <laughs> I know. Right? Oh, <laughs> you got two steering wheels and a, and a Nicholas Holt. That's yeah. going to cost you an extra $2. And it's like showing you, you won, but it's like, it's not a straight line. It like goes like two, <laughs> right. there's like, it's like all over the place. And it's like, you won $5. I'm like, yay. But how, right. how did I win? Because that's not like nothing matches. Like what the hell's right. happening? Right. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> they count on that. They count on the fact that, that that we don't get it as slot players walking up to this thing. Yeah, I'd rather spend my money on video games and, you know, buffets and yep. <laughs> food. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which Drone parts and 3D printers and... <laughs> which I was Gas just telling. station boudin. Yeah. I was talking to Jacob before the show because my birthday is coming up and there's this uh, this chicken buffet here in town called Hart's Chicken, and it's always busy. It's always packed out, and they do free buffets on your birthday. I, I told Jacob, that's what I'm doing for my birthday. I'm going to get a oh, buffet, cool. and nice. he didn't know about how he know about it. I'm like, how did you not know about this? This is like a local thing. Like you go for your birthday, and you get a free buffet. I didn't Sounds know. Awesome, yeah. yeah. It's so good. If you ever come here, <laughs> yeah. Brian, if you ever come to the coast, I'll take you to Hart's yep. Chicken. And, Sounds uh, great. It is. Uh, we'll wait in line and we'll get that chicken buffet. I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tiny little place, too. We were talking about how it's awful so it is small. to eat uh -huh. there because, like, you're eating, but people, like, right next to your table are, like, trying to get the buffet. So they're, like, hitting your elbows and shit. And you're just like, oh my God, get out of here. You have to hold up the sneeze glass for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've been hogging them, Jake. Have you got any questions for them? Well, I just want to commend you for having a podcast that's a pun about uh, uh, going number one. So I, I, I very oh. much admire that. <laughs> the morning stream. The yes, morning stream. Exactly. Um, yeah. How I just I guess I wanted to ask is like just exactly how um, how long do you think the morning stream will keep going and, and how strong do you think the morning stream will, uh, will well, as we be, get older, know? the, the morning stream right. gets weaker and weaker. Uh, do you think the morning stream will pitter <laughs> off a little bit as you get older or, well, you know, there's sometimes that we get up in the middle of the night to, to the morning stream and, right. uh, <laughs> And so, uh, you know, sometimes you can't get jokes for... sometimes you can't get all the stream out, and you have to come right. back and do smaller streams. Smaller streams, yeah. <laughs> right. You stop smaller for a second, streams. take a deep breath. <laughs> so, did you guys think about that when you when you name the show? Or <laughs> no, Scott to this day insists that he did not think of that connection, and he's a guy who thinks of, yeah. hey, how does this sound like a fart, or how does this sound like poop joke, whatever. <laughs> He insists to this day that that he uh, that the morning stream was not intended as a pun, and I totally believe him. I mean, I, he'd cop to it if yeah. he did, because it's you know people would say that's a great that was a great idea coming up with that name. We uh, for for Vegas we did this thing. I made a I don't have it uh, n uh, the other one near me, but we made a I three D printed a uh, a video game cabinet, like a little handheld size one, and then he designed labels and a screen and all that stuff and i cut them all out as stickers and it was basically if the morning stream was a video game this is what the the arcade cabinet That's would cool. look like and uh, you'll have to look for it on twitter or facebook yeah uh because he uh didn't didn't proofread it terribly well so it actually says the morning steam 
So it went from being a number one joke to a number two joke really quickly. The morning steamer. Mm. Morning steamer. Yes, it's uh, only available in Cleveland. Uh, but uh, it's a one now. It's a one of a kind collector's item. I mean, it is already because I've only yeah. made one of them. But uh, but if we make another one, we'll correct that so that one will always be the unique uh, morning steam. So you guys Canada. do that show four mornings a week, and then you do an That's extra right. episode on Fridays. Yep, for patrons, how, yeah. I mean, it, it, how long do you <laughs> think you can keep that up? Like, are you guys going to just do it forever? or? Uh, I think so. We'll do it at least until it's not fun anymore, because it's still, you know, again, that, that one we started 11 years ago, started that in 2011, and uh, I still look at it. I don't look at it as something I have to do. It's I, it feels like something I want to do. It's the way I get my day started. Yeah. And, uh, it is still fun. I still laugh every day, have a blast with it. We've got a great, uh, a great contingent of live folks who come in and, and watch it live, but then also 95% of the people get it as a podcast and we hear from them via email and Twitter and stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it as long as it's, fun and i don't see any signs of it not being fun so what's it like having a co-host that you like (laughs) (laughs) and not one that you love (laughs) there we go well done nice nice addition there nice save there jacob (laughs) (laughs) i mean i would love honestly i would love to do a daily podcast but man that just seems so daunting it's a lot yeah. of content you have to come up with. And uh, fortunately, we've got guests that come in every, you know, every week, different guests on different days who bring their own stuff that they want to talk about. Uh, we just have to kind of find the the weird news to talk about. And then, um, you know, just basically like the, hey, what's something weird that happened to you yesterday? And, well, and, not uh, only that, but the, 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 the game show, the game stuff that yeah. you guys do, like the amount of work that you personally put into yeah. that segment. Uh, because you have like three or four different games that you play. Yeah. Like when you do, there's one that's called uh, the Tadpooly mm. Feud, which is basically, right. you know, the family feud where uh, you uh, pull the, the Tadpool and then exactly. take the top answers. But you put all that stuff into like spreadsheets and. Yeah. Like- and, and, you know, you're getting people typing in their answers and you get 600, 700 answers in there. And people are going to spell things differently. We did one today for Baskin Robbins flavors. Like, you know, we said, all right, uh, hands on your buzzers. Uh, You walk into a Baskin Robbins. What flavor do you order? And so people have put, you know, double chocolate chip and chocolate chip cookie dough. Uh, The bad spellers spell cookie dough differently than other people. (laughs) And uh, they might call it uh, chocolate cookie dough chip or something like that. And so so on those on Wednesday, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and really, who knows how to spell uh, uh, Jamocha Almond Fudge? <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll have to go in there and I basically just sort the thing. I go through and I say, oh, that's probably what they meant, and and oh yeah, that'll also uh, be this sort of thing. And so I can kind of, to no pun intended, fudge fudge the answers from the spellings that people give yeah. and figure out exactly what they meant. The spirit of the game is, you know, 100% authentic, and the the answers that people give are 99.9% authentic. If I have to adjust something <laughs> because somebody said cold as a flavor, then, uh, That would you know. be Jacob. <laughs> yeah. Anything the lady has in a bucket down at the gas station. Right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, fried gator ball uh, flavor, sure. <laughs> Uh, then those might get deleted or they might get just rolled into chocolate or vanilla just to kind of keep the 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 different levels. Uh, That's just way more effort than I'm willing to put into the show. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah but I see, mean, you, know, you appreciate it. As a listener, you, oh, you yeah. look forward yeah. to those sorts of things. So, yeah. I mean, I couldn't live without you guys every day because my job, <laughs> basically... I work in a t- I work my day job is a t- oh, yeah. I work in a t-shirt shop uh you know screen printing graphic design and right. I don't talk to people all day like I I work in a shop pretty much by myself so right. I listen to podcasts and music all day and I listen to you lot you guys live every day when I can and um so it, it gives it take you know that's a good 2 2 hours of my day that 
you know, you guys make me forget about what I'm doing. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we hear from a lot of people who who really just use us as a distraction from their jobs <laughs> and yeah. totally fine with that or their commute or. And know, please take that as a compliment because. It oh, is. I do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely do. Yes. No, I uh, listen. If we weren't entertaining if we weren't fun then you'd be paying attention to your job so that's how i feel about yeah, it i it, probably it, should it. be paying more attention but not, I'm, I'm not going to <laughs> <laughs> i give exactly what what i feel is my my minimum where i can get the, things the done exact right amount yeah the exact right, yeah. right amount <laughs> but yeah. uh, but we're coming up to the end of the episode we got about five six wow. minutes left and uh because I got another show to do. I could sit here sure. and talk for another hour, but of course yeah. I got another It's a parade show of Brian's to tonight for you, isn't it? I know. Isn't it? I got Br yeah. you, Brian Ibbett, on this show, and then I have Brian, the Brian Dunaway on the Nerd Brian Cave Dunaway. Retro tonight. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Should man. have you on the yeah. Nerd Cave Retro show, too, because I'm pretty sure you, uh, you're you a good retro I mean, gamer. Do you see behind me the, the Nerd <laughs> Cave I've got set up? Yeah, I totally am a retro gamer. Uh, I've got a, a little homemade arcade machine with a uh, uh retro pie in there the the covercade uh that has all the old nes and atari and intellivision and all those sorts of I games i would love to have my own arcade machine i would love it but i don't have the room for it i can't i don't even have enough room to get the arcade one-ups like oh, i would yeah. love oh, no, to get a ninja turtles <laughs> i want a ninja turtles one-up machine so badly but i have yeah. nowhere to put it like yeah. nowhere yeah, I just picked up the arcade one up pinball um, back there. I guess it's unlit right now, but mm -hmm. behind, it's the uh, Marvel one, of course, because I'm a big Marvel Don't you have fan. A boy, but... Yeah, you got a Tempest machine yeah. back there, and too. And that's the real one. That's not the wow. arcade one. That's an actual, that's an actual Tempest God, machine. God, I love me some Tempest. I did too. That's that's it was my favorite game growing up. And so as soon as I saw one of those on Craigslist for a thousand bucks, Jeez. and those things usually go for <laughs> seven or eight thousand. It's their collector's item. And so wow. I'm holding on to that for as long as I can. Jacob's like, what's Tempest? <laughs> right. <laughs> I have no idea. What's an arcade? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know an arcade. I know that. <laughs> I know that answer. <laughs> I would love to have my own arcade though. One day, like if I could have a barcade, that yeah. would just be. Yeah. yeah. I think if I could work till retirement owning a barcade, like that would just be the perfect like end of life thing to do, you know. And they're yeah. big enough right now. Like this, that's a that's an absolute money making deal. The the place in uh, Vegas we went called Player One is you pay a five dollar cover charge, and all the games are set up to play for free. But then they make bank on. The drinks you buy that like I'm sure you know, 16 taps and a uh, full kitchen doing pub food and stuff like that and you know sure people are playing games but they're coming back to the bar and they're getting a pint and then they're going over and playing track and field and then they're coming back and getting another pint and then they're going over and playing blasteroids so that's a it is, it is a dream job it's yeah. got to be yeah. the only yeah. barcade i've ever been to was uh was one in new orleans i think it's called barcade and uh <laughs> clever clever and, name and <laughs> um i don't know it just didn't feel like a barcade oh, it felt really? more like a sports bar than a bar than an oh, actual barcade sure. you, you didn't go with me to game over in mobile no is that a barcade okay so it's shut down now but there was a barcade in mobile called game over but th i feel like the reason they went out of business was because you had to just go up to them with money and ask for quarters and oh, actually put geez. like a dollar oh. in every machine no I don't want yeah. to do that. No. Yeah. That, that's yeah, exactly. That's not thinking about the experience for the customer. Cause then you're, you're, you become the bottleneck of why they can't play the games yeah. way better to do the, you know, I'll pay a cover when I go in, I got easily got $5 worth of entertainment out of those machines for the cover charge. Yeah. Cause you get people in there and you charge them just flat five bucks and then you yep. just let them go in there and get pictures and, you know, drinks. And the more they're yeah. going to drink, the more they're going to spend. Exactly exactly it's a it's you got to think about the customer experience totally on that one and make it as easy for them to play the games that they came in to play yeah i might think about doing that in my <laughs> later years <laughs> yeah if well, you uh listen but, when you open that up i'll come there i'll be your first patron awesome i'm sure i'll, I'll have i'll let jacob work there he can clean the bathrooms and <laughs> thank you thank you i jason I would love to go out of business with you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, we can uh, we can be in the unemployment line together, and uh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I will see you there with the yes. on. <laughs> Brian, thank you so much for coming on the show. I uh, wish we had longer, 
we'll uh, we'll have you back again. And I do I do now. I, yeah, I'm gonna have you on the Nerd Cave Retro Show. I'd too, love to. So. Yeah, I'd love to be there. Well, I'd love to talk uh, Tempest or or oh, yeah. pinball or whatever. I can. I'd love yeah. to do a deep dive on Tempest because yeah. that. I know nothing about the the uh, the origins of that game. Oh, so sure. So it would be really yeah. fun to do a deep dive on that. Absolutely. And that's one of those games that there's so much lore around. There's the, you know, the the 40 credit trick that you could do to, like, score 40 free games on the yeah. machine if you knew exactly what to do. <laughs> wow. Because uh, the thing about Tempest is, is it's so hard to do a home port of that game because... You need the you need, you need the, the roller the yeah, wheel. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, that's the yeah. only way to properly play that game. Totally is. Yep. Maybe yeah, you can't do a joystick. You certainly can't do a keyboard or a mouse. No. It's got to be. It's got to be the uh, the wheel. Yeah. So the 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 original ex- arcade experience is the only way to really get the get what Tempest was about. That's right. If you don't have a wheel, it ain't Tempest. And Jake, <laughs> Jacob's still sitting there like, what the hell is Tempest? Never played it. Yeah. That that couchcade. I don't know if you've seen the the arcade one up guys have a couchcade that uh, is like a little. It's like a little TV tray you put in your lap, and then it connects to a thing that's plugged into your TV, and it's got the wheel. It's got a trackball, so you can do centipede and really? millipede and missile command, and then it's got your buttons. That is the oh, way to do it, and God. that's perfect for you if you don't have room for a yeah for a size arcade machine. Because I love missile command. That's one of my yep. favorite like arcade and i i love the uh, the atari version of it yeah but it i still you gotta have that trackball man you do like, trackball yeah, is yeah, the way do. to do it so i like yeah, pong into- do you guys fuck with pong <laughs> <laughs> actually i sure, found I a pong machine at the thrift store a couple of weeks ago they wanted like 14 dollars for it i was like i don't <laughs> know if i want to pay 14 dollars for this <laughs> <laughs> is pong that bad it's not worth 14 dollars. <laughs> yeah i mean it's either you get a dat dog or a pong machine yeah. i think i might go with the dat dog yeah i'm going with the hot dog <laughs> but brian thank you so much for coming on the show it's been a blast guys it was my pleasure thank you so much for having me uh yeah. it was an absolute blast and uh jacob what you got coming up before we get out of here uh, not much right now, man. I'm just I'm getting tased this weekend, yes. and uh, we've got Patty Dwyer on <laughs> next episode. So just make sure you guys are following us on TikTok. I'm putting a lot of content out on TikTok right now. Uh, so yeah, go check us out over there. And uh, if you would like to email us, you can email us at openmicerspodcast at gmail dot com. Uh, openmicers.com takes you straight to our Patreon and also don't forget to go to brezcoffeeco.com use our code OMPODCAST to get 10% off of our own very own Open Micers Dark Roast so go over there right now and do that and thank you to Brian at Coverville on Twitter and we'll see you guys next week fantastic cool perfect yeah, Brian. Um, I'll get with you this week about coming on Nerd Cave Retro. And uh, sounds good. And I'll be better at responding more quickly. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> with my schedule. <laughs> yeah, we're um, we're doing some switch around for the uh, for the show. We're gonna move nights, and uh, we're moving okay. both shows to Monday nights now instead oh, of okay. Wednesday. So cool. That actually works out uh, well because we'll be done with America's Next Stop Podcaster in yeah. about uh, four or five, three or four weeks. So and I got to get caught up with that. I'm so far behind on that show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And this new season is uh, crazy. Like, we had one guy who just flat out said, all right, I'm off the show that I'm done podcasting and just what? left. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. He was so pissed off at his critique that he just wasn't prepared wow. to take it. Oh, yeah. You got to listen. It's great. It's great stuff. So, everybody, uh, if you're watching this on the YouTube VOD, go check out. Uh, America's Next Top Podcaster, which is an awesome podcast. Uh, go check out Coverville, Film Sack, uh, The Morning Stream. Morning Stream or and, Steam, uh, whichever. Yeah, The Morning Steamer. The <laughs> Morning Cleveland Steamer. <laughs> I got to take a steamer right now, dude. We got to yeah. go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody.